program uh, participants will be discussing will be the evolution of future evolution. I have to watch out for these people because they are bizarre. But how can you say that? They write science fiction. They have to, you know, they have to think of things properly. Uh, like it, uh, introduce uh, Vince Miranda, who will be moderating the panel. For those of you who don't know, Vince, oh, Vince is Bongo the Duck. He is uh, a former science fiction editor. He is a science fiction researcher and historian. Has even worked on some questionable motion pictures. <laughs> but he knows an extensive amount about the science fiction field. I'm going to ask Vince if you would introduce the other panelists and go on into the program. Leave it all to you. Well, this is uh, um, uh, um, mad, 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 mad duck. He's got a back of Zadam. Zadam. Mutt Zadam. He really doesn't matter much because he teaches school, college. Uh, look at this man. I mean, would you trust it? Would you buy a used car from this? No, oh, but I'd buy his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves his hat. We're going to have to auction it off like but 25 cents. Where's that microphone? Yeah, the mic is gone. We don't raise the money. We've been told we can't have a microphone. Joe, where's our mic? I'm our not, mic, where's our joke? I'm not allowed to pour water down my pants. Fortunately, we do not have a microphone set up. We, we probably do. People get close enough to get people here. Why? 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 I'll see if we get that turned off. How about a blanket? The gentleman at the far end used to write opera in Italy before he moved to the United States. And, uh, yeah, Giuseppe Verde, and now he's just called Joe Green, and writes some of the best stuff you ever read. Opera. And this, by far, is the most important man that's ever lived. Because he tonight showed me where the beer was. <laughs> <laughs> Which is going to have us help us survive that Jack Baldwin. Real bad stuff beer. And the most wonderful thing about this is we have no idea what we're really going to do with this except have one. Okay, like everyone hear me. I used to have a tentorian voice. If you can't hear me, get a little closer because this is my hot dog. <laughs> okay. At Atlanta, at Worldcon last year, I attended a couple of sessions put on by doctors from CDC, your Center for Disease Control. They were talking about the effects of the new and very deadly street drugs that are out there now that do unexpected and unusual things to your metabolism. These drugs have the ability to awaken sleeping genes. If you're not familiar with sleeping genes, quick background. Your, the genes in your body, mine and everyone's body, are not all active. That everyone uses. Some of them are basically the sleep and apparently have no function. And the best guess is that those are genes which you use in some prior form before you came to your present physical existence. When I was Shirley McLean, I used those. Shirley McLean, you remember all her prior forms. <laughs> but in any case, some of these street drugs actually trigger and jar some of these sleeping genes and bring them back into activity. That does not mean that suddenly someone is going to become a ravening semi wolf man or start climbing trees with great ability. What it really does in these sleeping genes are going to cause short circuits in your brain. Short circuits. When you have short circuits in the brain, your body starts with funny things. And what really happens is the person gets something that strongly resembles Parkinson's disease. Their nerves get shot and they cannot hold themselves properly or do anything. Basically, they get very ill. Okay, I took that basic premise, which is that if you can control sleeping genes and the genes are all there, then it should be possible to put to sleep some of the present active genes, if you understand the complete genome of the creature, and awaken selected sleeping genes to recreate a bypass form. And in my particular story, which is now, yes, Omni just returned, Helen Dato just returned it yesterday, First mark, and now we'll go to analog and you see. But in any we case, work that way, you know. We'll start with the high pay part. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, that's not going to surprise us. No, I know. Just for anybody there, it's the first one. Right. 
But in any case, um, I, I decided to do a story and I recreated Mastodon working from Elephant. And the heart of my story does not deal with that, but that's the science background that I use to bring out the heart of the story and bring out the fact that in today's world, we are gaining, and hopefully by the time of my story, which is about 40 years in the future, we will have the ability to actually control the human genome, the genetic structure. And if we can do that, then we can determine our own evolution. And there's, I know very few scientists who don't think that we will eventually have that ability. So if we can get to the point where we can control our own, our own evolution, then the obvious question becomes, what do we want to evolve toward? And with that, I'd like to pass it to my fellow panelists to chew on that for some Let me say one thing, is that, is that right now, you know, sitting in front of this, uh, People who are involved both in, in, in science and have backgrounds in technology or in biomedicine or in science in one way or another. It's kind of unique. You know, that it's, uh, I'm a scientist myself. I'm a science fiction writer, but I am also a certified scientist. I'm published in science fiction. Uh, uh, Joe, I know, has done that. Discovery and it would be 
30 or 40 years before people started really paying attention to it and using it. Now, I talk about something, and, and two years later, but everybody's going to play an under An underused technology called the grants is what? Two years. But if you're talking about human evolution, refusing the plan is like cutting literally your own work. In other words, we're not talking about contact delivering computers and markets. We're talking about damage with our own genome. And if you're going to tamper with your own genome because the market's driving you to do so, then we might as well just all shoot ourselves and go over. But anything you're, you know, you're tampering with it. somebody else's? Well, but, that, well, exactly. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I happen to share, mine happens to be very similar to this. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, the consequences of my tampering with his are quite likely to have a severe effect on me. They might, they might not. Well, and on my children. I mean, that's the, that, I, right. I, you know, I'm a human yeah. being, not a squirrel, so I, I worry about my the thing is, you can't plan for the unexpected, the unknown, the unplannable, by definition. What we so, can do with the genome, we can we can speculate, but we can't plan about it. But would you suggest then that we just sort of like randomly give it a shot at, at, oh, no. at activating introns and oh, causing genes to be sure. expressed? In 40 years when we know what the heck we're doing, we should then go and start thinking about planning. We should plan it. When we know what we we're doing. Plan plan now. All I'm saying. We should plan out. <laughs> the problem Not is all the way out. Just the first step. There's no way the way society works today that you're going to be able to tamper with the human gene and human evolution uh, in a logical manner. There's just too much emotionality inside of it. Um, they can't even make a, a reasonable decision about surrogate motherhood. Like, what's tampering with what somebody's The courts doing? cannot make a reasonable decision about surrogate well, motherhood. The courts are the ones that make a It's scientifically done. It is a provable process that can be done. And the courts and society <laughs> and ethics are still sorting it out. Well, software is always lag for my hardware. Uh, I can't even prove. Yeah. It, it is the history of technology that it always outpaces the ability to handle it. If, if this is going to be different, I'd love to be alive to see it, but I don't think it will be different. We will once again outpace our ability to actually determine what to do with the new technology, whatever it is, always do. All the more reason, therefore, to try to control it as best we can. And I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not like a jurist or rhythm or something. Runs around suing people in the nick of these new variety of trees around. I'm just saying, this stuff is so incredibly explosive, so unpredictable, that to just say, hey, what the hell, let's try it out and see what happens. But so is fire and so is the wheel. Does that mean we've no, had a totalitarian no, statement? That's like that's the worst them. analogy I've ever heard in my life. The human genome to fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst analogy I've ever heard. I don't think so. Well, okay, the thing of the the potential for good and for harm is relatively speaking equally balanced. We don't know what the potential is. We don't know what the potential is, period. Are you suggesting that we leave it alone? Are you suggesting that we leave it alone and, and not deal with it? That no, it's not going to happen? Not at all. And I, not at all. I just think that we have to understand that, that we have crossed qualitatively into a new realm. We're really Absolutely. not talking about it. We're, yeah, I mean, we're not, what was it? Uh, Greg Barrett's famous quote from Armadillo Con, where he said that, he said, do you think that 50 years from now people are going to look like people? And he said, no, I don't. He said, no, that's, that's a fairly radical prospect. I think it's wrong, but I think in a hundred years. Uh, you know, people might look like people. Uh, and that is, that is not, taking your part, that is really not analogous to inventing the wheel. That is analogous to reinventing the whole use of the invention. You know, the eradication of smallpox. <laughs> has introduced a whole new spectrum into the gene pool. And there's, you know, and the, uh, uh, the, the advances in medical science enable people to live who, in a more primitive society, who dies, for not saying anything one way or the other, have changed the course of human evolution. Yeah, because these people who would ordinarily not have lived now living, reproducing. All right. So you know, I mean, that is a major, substantial change in the evolutionary process of our species. And uh, you know, so what we're doing here, uh, talking about uh, about you know, genetic engineering, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do that. It's, it's just to me, simply an extension of all that. And what I'm saying is that there are two two levels. Here. One level is the physical ability do this. Physical ability to manipulate this situation, that situation. And the second level is the 
ethical, moral, society's constraints, or willingness. All right, now, here is the mix of the bio genetic engineering, Berlin, and then Sheena Chapman. So, we have about what, 20 years, they expect to have a plug in, talk directly to your computer, looking at it. Berlin is the mix. I mean, I'd say that what you're saying is that's true, and this is still further evolution. We're just using a bigger tool, tool like what we We're just using bigger levers. Yeah, I mean, we're able to move larger populations now than we were able to move then. To me, that's the only thing, you know, except that, you know, it is the only thing. We're able to, we, what we did before, we could change you know, two lives, ten lives. The first heart transplant happened, something happened. All right, somebody who lived is not possible. All right, and that happened. Now we've got, what, 300, 500,000, 6,000? Right. These people are out there you know, in the gene pool or in whatever, doing their lives, business lives, etc. But that's yeah. what yeah. 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 the technology is now we can hear. Now for his next could you have a Hopefully the room will not I, burn up within the Yeah, next, I uh, think uh, one thing that needs to be thrown into consideration is how you know Many of the medical advances and, and other advances that have come along have been perceived as not as a, as a threat to the existing power structure. What happens if the existing power structure suddenly says, perceives these changes as a threat and says, hey, these people are going to be too smart for us if, we, if, if these changes come along? Most existing power structures, most of the time, see all changes as a threat. <laughs> That's, that's, why we happen are, is, <laughs> that's why we're dangerous. That's why it's not going to happen if it happens that way. If they perceive it as a threat and the power structure is powerful enough, it will never happen. It says yeah. That's usually perceived as a threat not by people at the top, but by people at the bottom. People at the top are confident in their ability to, to take the power and use it to their own ends. In other words, they think, to give me a smart guy, I'll pay him money and hire him. Whereas people at the bottom say, I don't want automation, it's going to make me lose my job. Uh, I don't want smarter people. I, I'm afraid of smart people as they are. I don't want smarter people. So that I don't fear uh, Ronald Reagan on this one. I fear United Auto Workers more than I do. I think you're right. I agree with that too. Hey, hey we found something. We can both agree. Hey, all right. Hey, hey, come on. I say on. it's absolutely right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Historically speaking, okay, any new technologies that we come up with, radical new technologies several hundred years that have been abused, whether it be Zyphon, B, gas, or whatever, or, or anything. Um, what are the groups that have abused them most? In other words, that this might be a different way of looking or attacking the problem, instead of dealing with the technology itself and how that should be used, dealing with people who are most likely to misuse that technology. Has it been the scientific community? These are the people who are interested in this misuse, but if you want, I mean, misuse is after the matter of the five judgments. Um, it's like on BF interesting, how do you not misuse cyanide gas, right, that's intended solely to kill people, right? right. Um, but, but, but for instance, people who, who misuse technology, i.e. use it to pollute the world, to kill other people, to maim people, to screw up our lives, those are people who generally perceive it in their interest to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, they have something like, I can make a bug, I can, you know, whatever, and it's everybody. The the discoveries are neutral. These are absolutely neutral. There is no good or no bad attached. They are just the little pieces of information just like every other piece of information. But when you start using them, that's, that's the whole yeah. thing. The, the whole way life. that you use them, that makes them good or I wonder, bad. You know, that's the, that is the guns don't kill people argument. And I've never known how I felt about it. And so some days, on alternate Tuesdays, I think, well, maybe guns don't kill people. I believe that about everything in the world except guns. <laughs> <laughs> Atom bombs. Atom bombs kill people. All right. Well, you know, you've read enough about the atom bombs. The atom bomb was not developed as quickly as you know. Oh, hey, let's build this big thing and kill a lot got, of people. You got it was a thing. culmination of a lot of people making a lot of discoveries. But you still, you do have this thing that you can say. You can say, I think I'll flip the switch on this. And what hey, if you, what are you going to go back to, Madame Curie, and you know, and say, hey, this glows in the dark. I don't think anybody ever will look at this stuff again. Uh, okay, then tell me, tell me what you're going to well, do good with an atom bomb. Oh, I think a lot of people are going to my head. A lot of asteroids going on. The, the, the problem is, so you can then move it down I, here. I, 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 I have a, a couple of publishing today, houses. Today, right at this moment, okay, <laughs> large-scale engineering projects with the, the, the cleaner news. 
That's what they said about dynamite. Alfred Nobel. He's I mean, he invented right. dynamite to make war. Same thing with Gatling with the machine gun. That was to make war too yeah. terrible. So <laughs> same argument. And that never the exact that. same argument. That, 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 that goes back to the flintlock, and it goes back to the Pope banning the crossbow because it was too terrible of a weapon. Let, let me get out a quick one here. For those of you who think that there is no opposing, opposing point of view to the fact that technology is always neutral in a type of slide, Patrice and I were reading, or she was reading to me on the way down, some very pertinent comments from a book that was famous about 10 years ago that addresses that very rare subject. The book is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance yeah. by Robert Persig, and he tackled that point, and he has an opposing point of view, which I think has a great deal of validity. Well, there's a whole movement out there now that's, that's uh, led by people like uh, Jeremy Rifkin, who are utterly, who, who say that we have to change entirely our relationship between technology, man, and nature. That we have to go to what they call an empathetic uh, relationship with nature rather than a dominator. And again, I'm all going to see if that sounds pretty good, except they, that what it ultimately boils down to is them saying hands off hands off this, that, 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 that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, they make the, the, yes, it's an interesting point is you see these people who have taken this attitude and appoint themselves as the people who have the wisdom to decide what the rest of us should or should not do. Yeah, that's the point. That's where it falls apart. Who would you give that power to? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so that's I what probably, what? if it was left up to me and I was God, <laughs> I would probably just turn it loose and let everyone go his own way and see what right. came out of the furnace. That's, that's, you know, shuffle it all out and let Good, bad, and different. Isn't yeah. it true that some things are so powerful that no individual's action can be disregarded by the others? I mean, if we, if we all have nuclear bombs to play with, we would all find life rather unpleasant. I can't kill you with a nuclear bomb without killing a lot of other people in the process. So I just like the concept of a guy that's sitting there in the living room with a you know a 30 megaton unit and says, I think I'll commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> and he lives exactly, downtown, exactly. you know. It's so <laughs> that you the, can't use it in isolation. On the subject of the nuclear bomb, I would like to state that uh, the, the nuclear bomb, the thing that led to it, was a discovery, a certain piece of knowledge. The thing that led to the nuclear bomb, that same piece of knowledge, is also what led to nuclear reactors, which have given us a uh, substantial percentage of our energy on the point of a discovery is neutral, what we put it to use. As, as well as artificial radioactivity. As, as well as cancer treatments. Yeah. 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 As well as some young, you know, as yet undisclosed. Yeah, the tools not just for genetic engineering are incredibly simple. <coughs> I mean, they are, they are within the grasp of anyone with, with a Modif from a mod of money. And, you know, <coughs> I don't know. You know, maybe that's where morality comes in through it. That's where the judgments lie. I don't know. But, it's not a matter know. of secrecy, anyway. it's a matter of social legislation. I mean, I mean, no, it's not a matter of secrecy. It's a matter of a society determining that, for instance, if you build an atomic bomb and we catch you doing it, Right. We're going to put you away. If we catch you screwing around the genome, we might put you away. But notice how many yeah. people who are given that alternative with regard to uh, drugs, for example, ignore it anyway. People, the question isn't what is it, should we do something with the human genome. Mm -hmm. The question is what will we either do with the human genome if we're the ones doing it, or what will we do about somebody who has done something with the human genome? I think, I think Frank <laughs> Herbert wasn't too far off the mark with uh, the media as a whole. Uh, no, not that one. The uh, the other one, uh, white play. Uh, if oh, it can be done, it will be done by somebody who gets upset enough. Right. Absolutely. Well, you Absolutely. use a Gaddafi or a yeah. I have to go money on that. Yeah. Yeah. Can be done. Or will be done. Well, this, this, but isn't that just that can't can't about the same that's all over for us? Oh no, no. I mean, no. obviously not. We, uh, we continually grow faster than the threats to it. Well, but that's not true. There are viral threats that we can't do. But they're not yet here. By the time they are, aren't there? Aren't there? Could you can't just make it fairly easy to conceive? of a viral threat that the human species could not, could not meet in any effect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, that, so that kind of optimism is There's so many critical points. Point. Yeah. No, yeah. no, it, it takes All you need is somebody broken. in the sealed yeah. lab who gets pissed off and pours his experiments down his You don't even drink. have to pour it off. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> don't get me off on that. I can talk about, <laughs> I can talk P1 containments all night. I can talk about the, the, about the physical constraints on genetic engineering and laboratories and about how they failed up and down the line. Mm -hmm. I can talk about this. I'm a scientist. I love it. I mean, I like, I'm a believer in true 
research. I'm a believer in investigating the world around you and passing on this knowledge to those that follow you so that people can build on that knowledge and go forward. That is something that I absolutely truly believe in. But I I cannot believe in, in, the, in, in, in the rules, the regulations that are governing genetic engineering right now, or that are supposedly governing ge genetic engineering, or supposedly safeguarding genetic engineering, I think, I think what we're walking into is a big can of worms. And nobody knows what they're walking into. And they're wiggling up between their toes, and they're looking down and saying, oh, look at that. And you want me to tell you what I think? I think it's all ready. Yeah, I, really, I agree, I agree with that. Already, 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 already. Because every goddamn facility in the United States that's been licensed for genetic engineering has had breach of security. Every one. One, two, three, four, five. So what are the tests? Every one. What all right. One? My feeling is that we've already blown it. If you want to know my absolute true feeling, we've already blown it. Meaning what? I think that we had the big card in our hands and I think we dropped it on the floor. So what is that? But I mean, what are the consequences specifically that you're claiming? Well, I, I, I think, I think that we, I think that we set us up in a situation where we're going to have to dance real quick. We're going to have to dance real fast. We're going to have to use everything we've got because the cat is already out of the bag. I, 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 but I'm having trouble understanding what's the nature of the cat. Yeah, is what, <laughs> what is it going to kill us all and eat us? Or, or what, I mean, what are you saying? I look at it. I don't I see mean, any of these things happening. So that cat can't be very fierce. <laughs> what? Oh, this what? cat is only five years old. If you realize how many years it takes to get something into the general society, mm -hmm. all right, right, you know. Yes, I do. Right. Right. I wanted to hear something real. Right. Right. Well, I'll give, I'll give you something real. Uh, I think we're all dead. I, mean, I can't tell yeah. yeah. This man peddles things this to these crooked scientists. <laughs> <laughs> two, two years ago, my, my company that I work for uh, opened up a biotechnology division. And within two years, we've become one of the largest suppliers of uh, restriction enzymes. I mean, every single conceivable, <laughs> uh, specific, you know, gene scissors, all the mechanics, all the tools that you need to do anything you want. And, and we have absolutely no restrictions on right here. Sort of ash, and you know, I mean, we have <laughs> But anyway, we have absolutely no restrictions whatsoever on who we sell to. And, and, and if you think about it, well, that's innocuous because you, know, you can pour one of these things into someone's drink and it's, it's not going to in for sale. It's not but, but a complex situation. Exactly. And we have people, scientists, who are, who are in their laboratories at home, in their garages, they, they start off with electric freezers equipment. Oh, a couple of hundred bucks, and we'll set you up and get you started. You know, gels, this and that. So all this and, wizard's fault. But anything they want. Now, they're expensive, but if you want these things, you can get them. Now, you can't buy any, uh, what, what, what is it, uh, ether, because or you might you might make cocaine or something, you know, uh, cocaine rock or something. <laughs> you can't buy ether. <laughs> no. That's right. So that's restricted out the wazoo. You have to be A on your heartbeat. But these restriction enzymes, there's absolutely no restrictions. <laughs> so, you know that you can buy Cobra venom through the mail. You know that you can buy Cobra venom through the mail and you don't need anything except the check. Tell the group what restriction enzymes do. I doubt most people know. Tell the group what restriction enzymes do. I say I doubt most people know. Well, basically, you take a, uh, an individual gene that uh, gene, uh, 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 thank you, a strand, if you will, of a particular DNA. And you want to go ahead and cut using a gene scissor, if you will, uh, a part of that out of it. So they have all these different labeled uh, enzymes that their specific uh, tool, the specific thing they do is to cut out that particular gene. Now, when you cut out something, then you can add things to join them together, or you can tighten them up, or do there's all kinds of things that you're doing. They're just starting to map out. Now, this mapping is a very, very crude state right now because there's literally millions and millions of, of possibilities. But basically, you take a gene which does one thing, does it well, and you convert it or change it into something that does something totally or completely different. By manipulating the actual strand of the gene, which is what I was talking earlier about, putting awakening <coughs> sleeping genes, which are there but inactive, and putting active genes to sleep, yeah. so they cease to be active. Same basic principle. Okay, we aren't wanna, really quite there yet, but we're getting there. What cat's out of the bag? I still want to know. I mean, All right, look at this. You just look heard at the what man. you've got. You've just heard it. The thing is, the how, garages, how complex you... is this? This is something that you can do. If you have, all right, I would say, 
Okay, now let me stop. I, 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 I can buy it. I can buy it. I got twenty. I got twenty. All right. Right. All right. How many people? How many people? How many countries? How many this is? How many that have the opportunity? You know what? Ten thousand dollars is okay, so ten thousand dollars. We're talking to to, to just to do something. What do? Right. What are they going to do? That's what I want to know. Take your favorite virus and make it The consequences can be as as minuscule as you know as as you know the new bride, a little bride. tiny right. bit more gray in your hair, mm -hmm. or as 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 maximum as. You know, AIDS and beyond. Yeah, well, here's an they example. Can, yeah. What are the inevitable results that we are definitely going to see in the next five years? I mean, that's what he's asking. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, but we, oh, we can't possibly tell you. Make up some. Come on. The the there, was, was, there was a case, there was a book written almost 20 years ago by Kit Pedler and Jerry yeah. Davis, I think, called Mutant 29, the Plastic Eaters, oh. in which some guy um, yeah. devised, a, did an experiment <laughs> a great that allowed. Uh, <laughs> Terrible. I've had a copy of this book for years and ignored it because I said, you know, if I'm going to vote for trash, I'll pick this one up. Uh, the whole concept was that a man was working in plastics and came up with a type of synthetic that was almost exactly like real rubber. And there were some faults with it, so he throws it away, pours it down the drain. And uh, so the problem wasn't the substance he'd made, but that the fact that a virus that deteriorated rubber was able to start consuming this, and the virus mutated so that it could start consuming more or, or less artificial plastics until it was just devouring plastic anywhere and causing civilization basically to break down until they found something. That's, that's what we're doing. Now, this we're is playing happening with now. big toys. We got big we chips on the table. And you don't need a lot of shekels to get into this damn game. Is that that's a reasonable and practical scenario? It's happening at? now. That's what I was hey, going to you, you, you know, it is happening. You, you, you know. They've devised viruses now that will break plastics down. Hey, and, uh, hey you want to do something. Plastics. Go up, it's go up to problem. Greenbelt, Maryland and go, boo. You know, and see what kind of fume is rise up there, man. Hey, it's happening. You know, if they're doing it, they're doing it. And if they're doing it and they're doing it, you know, they're doing it. And so pretty soon, hey, I, I'm going to be doing it. You know, Jack, self-protected. Are you saying the breach of security is international at this point? I'm sorry. Are you thinking that the breach of security is international as far as... Bought security. Yeah, right. Bought security. Only things that aren't made of plastic. That's my advice to you. I mean, yeah, that was one big problem. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is all wide open. This is all wide open and out on the table. And it's, you know, it's just, you know. How about a hardier AIDS That would be sufficient. There is a hardier AIDS virus. The one that can survive on the skin long enough to transmit it. There. I no, 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 he wants an age that can be transmitted by casual contact. Yeah. No, he doesn't. No, I don't. No, I, don't. No, I, don't. I really seriously don't think he does. <laughs> In fact, I bet if you took a vote, nobody does. <laughs> As an example, though, something that could well be out, and I would imagine would be relatively easy to do, and would be thoroughly lethal to a population, long, long incubation period, lethality, uh, highly infectious. Well, I can certainly see them while you're so optimistic about the future. Oh, no, I realize it's a different point of view. You realize what a weird world we're in. You know, if, if you were to come out today and say, I'm going to put aspirin on the market, it would not be approved. Oh, you're right. right. Aspirin would never be approved by the FDA. I mean, it is no way it would be approved. <laughs> but, you know, you know. Right, go to Mexico to get your aspirin. Go to Mexico to get your aspirin. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, this is this is the kind of a country we live in. This is only one country, right? There are other countries, but you know, we all have our own peculiar little hangups. But you know, I mean, there's already little accidents that happen around our house. Think, Jerry, think of all the substances that chemical sales sells that. Uh, the housewife doesn't know about she can buy this and she can buy that and then she says well if this cleans plastic real good and if this cleans glass so well i'll mix this <laughs> and then the husband comes home and finds the wife lying on the floor you know yeah, barely exactly. breathing and this happens all the time or just mustard gas or whatever yeah, yeah. yeah. from 
what should be common household items. You know? I was just saying, I think that's a sexist anecdote. Don't you think that's a sexist anecdote? That's not funny. That's not funny. I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times I found this woman out cold on the floor. That's not funny. That's not funny. That's for me. She told you. She told you it was mixing clean. Yeah. Yeah. I have an aunt that was blinded by mixing two different. Uh, labels of shampoo together. They were both shampoos and you poured them yeah. together and you went blind. Yeah, it's kind of thing. We got big toys out there. We got big yeah. toys with lots of ramifications and combinations we haven't examined yet. I mean, we're talking, you know, you're talking about research about this or that. Just the toys we've got now are really weird. Yeah, well, one of the great values of science fiction is not that we're going to change the world, but we do often have the capability to produce the literature that will examine these questions and open up not one but many possibilities so that you can look at the various possibilities and decide which one you want. We've heard several here tonight. One possibility is a real tight control. Everybody is basically forbidden to do this. It only goes on in approved laboratories by your government, of course. You're always been able to government. And then no one is allowed to take anything out of that lab other than that which is good for mankind, which your government decides what is good for mankind. Unless you carry it in your lungs and breathe it out later. And the other possibility is people at home in their garages, which is already happening apparently, but working at home after they've done a day at the office because they're really fascinated by something they think they can do, and they're going to produce this dog which is going to have uh, extra sharp teeth or whatever they're working on. In my case, I really think I want to produce the one that I can feed into the water system. It'll give everyone curly hair. I think you should all have curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're here, Joe. Hey, I've been waiting for that. Well, people love oh, this, this concept is really scary. I mean, this chemical salesman here is a friend of ours. He's always giving Sarah these samples. I mean, we've got some strange, she makes pets. Yeah, the strange things, you know, going up the wall and across He's the He's got straight hair, too, didn't he? And I had straight hair. <laughs> Uh, slime 
beings. Oh, you mean the green ones? The orange ones? No, 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 no. No, I have to go with the orange ones. I go with the plasmic orange No, no, you're thinking wrong. Neanderthal thought he was man, and we call him an ape. I mean, you know, the yeah, next ones are the humans and we're the proto humans. I call it my next door neighbor. I mean, because I was thinking when, when she brought up the fact the that uh, nuclear. Yeah. Tell that to the science. Well, when, when she brought up the right concept there. that you know, nuclear power is good and everything, well, I, I love the concept of nuclear power. Hey, especially not I hate nuclear, the fact right? that, I mean, that they let humans play with it, unfortunately. <laughs> and, you know, you're talking about it's a wonderful source of energy. And think of all the energy that comes from it and everything. And all I could think about was the energy expended by the folks who lived around Chernobyl as they got the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever met any technology that was risk and disaster free? I think it's I think it's natural. I for think the Scotch new, tape. The new was <laughs> <laughs> hey, that blade will break your condom. I started, I, started, I started to say the silver, and then I had some second thoughts. Yeah, uh, second thoughts there. Well, but there's also, there's also the position that, that, that the, place, the wrong place for expanding technology is the surface of the planet. And I think that that's a pretty reasonable position. In other words, take it out somewhere, you fuck it up, bam, okay, we start over, we bring it to the house. Oh, well, right. one asteroid by yeah. yeah, that's a good You know, you, that's where you get the phone call in from the asteroid saying, you know, oh, something's wrong up here and we can't figure out what's doing. You go, don't worry about it. You push the button, <laughs> yeah. boom, up in the sky, and you send another team up. <laughs> that's, that's the solution. Yeah. Uh, that is a very... Who did that? Somebody wrote a story like that with a spaceship and... Uh, oh, yeah. Ben Boba. Anything you story can say, you're somebody going to read the story. It's been written. And it will be done again. Hopefully, we'll all sell it many more times. Yeah, right. Because, you know, this is true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all I have. Thank you. 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 Thank the, the, the accident that Jack is talking about with genetic technology, if it is more likely that if there is an accident, it's going to be a bad one rather than a good one, because it's very difficult to tear in curly hair, and it was very easy to produce a virus that would kill me. In other words, the, process, the mechanism of just changing my hair curl is very complex. The mechanism of simply causing myself to stop is very simple, and there are, there are a lot of ways to kill people but there are a lot fewer ways to change them, either positive or negative, or just change them and leave them alive. You're talking about hitting one specific point on non-lethal point. Or on physiotypes, as you would. I mean, because that thing happens in nature all the time. <coughs> yeah, you get a no, new flu most of them die out. Most of the, most of the thousand and die bad out. choices die out. Right, but. If you have just a bad choice, you know, all you do is wrap it. You put a shitty man. That, that is, your point is true, but it's been true for quite a few years now. We're still here. We're really a pretty tough species. Yeah, we are. We've got a very resilient. I think that's a really bad attitude. I really do. I mean, cockroaches, that's a tough species. <laughs> sure, yeah. that's a tough yeah. species. Yeah. We're, 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 like, we're just like these new, soft kind of guys on the ground, you know, running around. <laughs> 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 soft guys, right? We don't, you know, I mean, we haven't demonstrated that we can resist any of, any of these things. We're the top dogs right now. We're going to fight. Uh, okay. yeah, well, that's, that's one of the very things, though, that makes, makes it so dangerous for us. I mean, the roaches don't go around and make bombs and things they can wipe themselves out with. We've got technology. We've got, I mean, you know, ants war among each other, but there's still lots of other ant mounds nearby. But we have the concept, of, we're human, we've got technology, we can do a lot more damage. We only have one anthill as far as I know. One anthill. No, 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 no. That's, that's, as a, an entomologist friend of mine said one time, and J.B.S. Haldane in another context said very much the same thing. This friend of mine said, uh, said human beings are kind of interesting. He said, but in terms of the earth, they're not that important. He said, like, step back a few, step back a few steps. Now, remove all human beings from the earth. Okay, well, it doesn't look that much different. He said, now remove all insects. Right. And he said, it's a whole other ecosystem. And that's also J.B.S. Haldane, who was a Nobel Prize winning uh, biologist, was on a BBC radio show in the late 30s. And he was on with a, with a, an Anglican vicar who asked him, he said, uh, Dr. Haldane, I know you're not a believer, but you have observed God's kingdom and it's funny. What would you conclude about the creator? Creator, whatever it is. And so, and so Haldane said, an inordinate fondness for beetles. <laughs> 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 
And I think that's really where it's at. You know, you have to remember that. Beagle. Beagle. Intelligence is not necessarily a survival mutation. Very good point. A lot of people don't understand that. Intelligence is not necessarily a good survival characteristic. I think we're not addressing Unless, of course, you care about individuals. Cockroaches don't care much about individuals. I think there's one thing that, that might want to be addressed too, and uh, it's appropriate to address here, is the fact that since this is on evolution of sorts, uh, if we are heading for some, if we are in the process of some Hegelian evolution of the species, all right, as in we're in our adolescent phase, that would almost go along with it, with that premise that we are evolving, and that we might very well be able to evolve out of our mistakes. If you will, or or you know, if we get into we're playing with bigger toys. There's no question about that. Very dangerous ones. But if we're on some Hegelian journey up the ladder, then perhaps we can uh, come cope with it. We have the resilience to be able to grow with it and, and become a better species as a result. I, I think that if we're not, and we're still at the same level species-wise as we were uh, a couple thousand years ago, where swords were the order of the day, that, that, then I suspect that we will. We're in very very grave danger. But what reason would there, I mean, you, you postulate this, this kind of upward path, you know, which is essentially a religious idea that's, uh, that's unprovable. I mean, uh, you're like when you no. were saying, I believe oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that was real quick. Why? It's not essentially a religious idea. Why? Because it's, it's founded it's on an evolutionary process. idea based it's on our own own. Darwin had it a long time. Darwin had a lot of I don't think they're talking about the same thing. This guy, Hegel and friends, are not talking about the notion that we do evolve or rather that there is a deterministic factor we that must, we're supposed to Right, but there is this, there is yeah. this sort of, it's like you're climbing and the climbing the ladder. Yeah, and that's what happens to you. Yes, too. yes, yes but was well, he not also thinking in terms of the normal slow movement of evolution? He was not thinking of the controlled evolution, which is the subject of the sketch. Yeah, yeah, not to was, mention natural death by natural causes, which humans have stopped all over the world. What are natural humans anymore? Stop. I mean, what do you I mean nobody dies of natural causes anymore. Uh, they used to Everybody die at 30, right? now they all live to 70. I mean, well, that's the point that Tom was making earlier is that we're changing the rules. So we're very soon going to be able to have the ability to do that all the time. A hundred years ago, or two hundred years ago, most of us in this room that wear glasses would be at a very distinct disadvantage, socially, economically, and The fact is that two hundred years ago, most of us wouldn't be here because our parents would have died before we could see. Not only that, 20 years ago, you could not get a bottom line. A number of us are here simply because we have to have medical care. Well, we put it in our arms. Can we go next? Yeah. Can I ask Jack one question? I, I just, I just okay, can't. One more question because Edie just stuck her head in and gave me a dirty look because the Filkers want to hold their annual nude mud, mud wrestling science fiction center. <laughs> I just want to find out whether we ended on an optimistic or pessimistic note. One, at one yes. minute, he was saying that. <laughs> wait a second. One yes. minute, Jack was saying that, that it's the cat's out of the bag, that anybody in their bedroom for 25 bucks can put, give us a better that's going to wipe out the world, and the last thing we ended up is we're a resilient species right up there with beetles and we're safe. Make up your mind. I can't go sleep like this. Let's take a boat. You're both will not matter very much. Everybody here wants to know, is the naked uh, filking science fiction blood wrestling going to be in here or somewhere else? Next room down. All those in favor of the naked blood <laughs> okay, we want to thank you and for enduring this. We're really amazed we managed to keep you all sitting here. We have some bets going that you've warned her off. Wait, what's wet where? What's wet where? That's true. Take what you got on, you're glad you just saw it. It's this sort of t shirt contest. We have later. That's what I've been waiting for. Wet where is programmed for all of us.